Alright, hey guys, welcome back to Beast Quest, Series 27, Book 3, Raptex the Sky Hunter. As we continue on with Series 27 of Beast Quest, um, doing great so far, bear with me, I just want to make sure I get out the next book after this, which will be Gargantua, because I need to read that later today, if all goes as planned. But yeah, we're on um, the next book now, which is, like I said, Raptex. Yeah, seriously, so just to verify, because I may have got my numbers wrong. Uh, but yeah. So, let's not waste any time, guys. Uh, so like always, in this story analysis and my overall thoughts on this epic adventure. So make sure you've read this book before watching this review, unless you don't care for spoilers. That being said, though, let's get to it. Tom and Eleanor head out from their dif from the, for head out from the area where they were defeating Devora. They bump into Loris, Loris, the good brother of Caradin, who explains while they're making progress, he's getting weaker with each beast battle they're having. Loris explains where Raptex is, and our heroes head out. Once there, they meet a boy who explains the route they would need to take to get to the beast's whereabouts. Tom pays his family to look after their animals. After some milk, they head out. But as they climbed that, as they climbed up the mountain, they felt woozy. Turns out the milk was drugged. The goons took Tom's belt powers, but Tom broke free, fleeing from El fleeing with Eleanor. I should mention the Briders got the golden armor powers mixed up, as the breastplate was used not, was used to give Tom strength of heart, when actually it should be the strength of the chainmail. Um, but as they carried on, they got weaker from the drugged milk. Silver soon joined them, joined their duo. Turns out he escaped probably, not trusting of the villagers, as he placed further, as he, as he, yeah. As they paced on further, Tom got into a confrontation with Caradin, who offered an alliance. Tom declines the offer, yeah, Tom declines the offer, and just before Caradin makes an attack, Eleanor comes to his rescue. Using the strength of the breastplate, Tom climbs on. Uh, looks like they corrected their mistake with the armor powers. However, despite Tom's efforts, Caradin released Raptex in a cave. However, after a after a screeching, Raptex instead of killing killing flees from the cave. At first, I wondered why, but I guess Caradin puts his own selfish grudges against killing the hero. You see, you see, you see. Early on, it was established there was when Caradin was human, he didn't get credit for saving a town, the warrior known as Bart did. Obviously jealous, he plans to send Raptex to destroy the town that he helped save because he didn't get the credit that he deserved. Uh, our heroes then, our heroes seem trapped until the young boy comes until the young boy comes and returns to the power belt along with Storm. He explains he had nothing to do with, with the drugging and hoped our heroes would, would be, would, wouldn't be so hard as parents for their actions. Our heroes kind of understood, but they had other matters to deal with. So they headed off to the town where Raptex was causing destruction. After a bit of back and forth, Caradin ordered Raptex to destroy the statue of the warrior Bart. Tom stops Raptex by knocking him off course. Tom then challenges Caradin to single combat. At first, it looks like Tom's plan is working until Caradin catches on and reorders Raptex to continue the attack. Uh, however, Eleanor put a stop to it, knocking Raptex off course again and blinding him with a sail, causing Raptex to crash and making the statue fall on Tom. Tom broke free, grabbed the statue's weapon, saw Raptex flying away, but tossed the spear into, into the beast's hide. This made Raptex crash to, the, crash to his defeat. Tom ordered, ordered him to surrender, and he did. With Raptex defeated, Caradin just laughed and he, and he made a retreat. Because as Tom turned, he now realized his victory meant nothing as Raptex had died from his injuries increasing Caradon's power. It seemed our hero's quest was only just beginning. Also on behalf of Adam Ferns and on behalf of Adam Ferns, my friend, bullshit on Tom saying this was their like one of the toughest quests yet. <laughs> because I'm sure Adam was there thinking a few things about that as well as I did. Um but yeah, because <laughs> there were way bigger stakes before this. Uh, and probably after. Anyway though, on to the character portion. Um as for the story, I'll say this, uh, it's not the best. Um, it's basically, go here, go to this location, gain the, meet the the new side character of the, of the story, then climb a mountain a bit, and then after they climb, after, after a few back and forth, they get to the cave. 
They come across rap text. There you go. They come across rap text, and um, they fight um, him for. A, well, is it, no, I take that back. He didn't fight him. He just leaves. Goes to the goes to the town. Scuffle here. Um, a few knock, a few knocks, of course. A little single grudge match between Carrot and Tom, and then the beast gets defeated, and it's just another stepping stone. But yeah, that's really the story. As for the characters, Tom kind of has the most arc out of this. When it comes to the heroes, he's trying to. I do pre, um, He's trying to negotiate with Carrot at points, trying to trick him. Um, mind you, he goes nowhere, but at least he's trying to make some development. So there is a bit of that going on for Tom's character. Elena, while she doesn't have much of an arc like Tom did for this book, at least she did bail him out a few times when they got in, when things got a bit stuck, stuck, you know, a bit sticky. Where Carradine was making that offer, or Raptex was doing what he needed to, Elena did help bring the beast to the its defeat, so there's that for you. Benji is the side character of the story. He doesn't really do much at all aside from provide. Basically, he's basically here as a, as a plot point, plot device. He's there to re to return the powers of, to return the belt powers to Tom. He's there to um, provide exposition. So he's just there for uh, moving the story along. Really, he doesn't really seem like his own character more, but he feels like a plot device. Carradine, of course, as our villain, just continuing on his usual stick. Um, we do get to see that, and I will say this, in this book we do get to see more of his weakness, uh, which is, he's very, he's, he is vain about himself, and he feels like he's entitled to stuff that isn't rightfully his, which is a few other villains as, as their flaw, but I feel like, I don't know if this was established prior, but I feel like this book may have been more, the most established of Carradine's weaknesses, so that might give Raptex some credit, as in the book. And then we cut to Raptex himself. Um, well, he's not the best beast, I will say that much. There are better ones in this book. I would say Devor is probably the best so far, but probably Gargantua will probably beat that out way of, the, of its course. As for Raptex, he really doesn't do much at all. He just, he's basically the equivalent of a dog, which is funny because the first beast was a dog in a way. But think about it. Basically, he's a pet. Ordered to do just an obedient beast to do what he's told. So don't fight the heroes. Go over here. Take care of my own petty grudge thing, which he could have easily done in the cave, but he didn't. Then a few back and forth with him riding around, and then he dies. Really, not much to him, really. Sadly, Raptex really is kind of just, um, just there to pad out the series more. Like you're just there to provide filler. Provide a little, a little uh, a distraction. Go here, go there. That's all you need to do. He does have a screeching ability, but aside from that, there really isn't much to have to. You feel, at least with the other two beasts, while they, yeah, they're stepping stones to Gargantua when we get to him, at least they felt like their own independent stories. They're like, just because they were stepping stones to Gargantua, they felt enough character to the beasts themselves more than Raptex, that's well. So it is a shame too, because Raptex does look like a good sounding beast. It's a griff griffin eagle looking thing, and then of course its name Raptex, which is a fusion of the two words di of the two greatest dinosaurs, di the Raptor and the T Rex. It is kind of a shame that, it, and, and the title, the Sky Hunter. I don't really get the Sky Hunter at all, really. If because like, if anything, the Sky Hunter is more carried and riding around on him, because like. Raptex doesn't really have that... When I expect the Sky Hunter, I'd expect some sort of intelligent beast, but I didn't really get that. I got just another... Rawr, destroy thing. So, at least... I'll give him credit, though. At least he did surrender. He, he accepted his fate. Anyway, though, that's all I've got to say about Raptex the Sky Hunter. Again, it's not the best book of the series. This is probably the weak point. Um, yeah. So, coming up next, of course, will be Gargantua, the... Silent Assassin, and I'm sure it's going to be miles better than Raptex. I am curious to see how the series ends, because me and Adam have been wondering back and forth who's in control, Gargantua or Carradin, because I believe it was established earlier on that, Car that Gargantua was possessing him, 
So I'm wondering how much of this is Carolyn and how much of this is uh, Gargantua. From what we've seen so far, especially in the last book, it has been implied it's more Carolyn's doing as it's his petty grudges against um, the the warrior Bart and all that stuff. So it seems to be more Carolyn. I know Adam would prefer it to be Gargantua's doing as a puppet master. But again, we'll have to wait and see what the final book has to offer. So that being said, guys, this has been my review on Raptex the Sky Hunter. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you guys. Uh, for the finale book hopefully soon for that review and then I'll put it all together. So thank you for watching until next time. Peace out